After creating Injecto, a desktop plastic injection machine, many of our viewers asked if they can use it to recycle plastic at home. This inspired us to make Shreddy, a related device that converts plastic waste like these water bottles into small shreds that fit into Injecto and then recycled using 3D printed molds. By the way, we're giving Shreddy away for free to one random subscriber, so hit subscribe now and let's get building. As always, our first step was to generate final CAD designs that we believe in, and after many iterations, we finally arrived at this affordable design which should still shred effectively. When the prototype designs were complete, we 3D printed all the parts to test Shreddy with some foam. Of course, by the time the slow 3D printer finished printing, we had already manufactured all our parts using a fiber laser cutter, CNC mill, and lathe. The main internal components of Shreddy are these custom steel blades, and other custom shims and blades which we'll make available on our website. With all these parts in front of us, we began building Shreddy like a puzzle. The first step was to insert the rod into the shaft and then insert all the blades. Note that we also insert a spacer in between the blades to position them properly and also to prevent plastic from falling through. You can install the blades in whatever orientation you want, but we decided to install them equally spaced apart so there's only one blade cutting at a time. This should increase our force per tooth during the cutting phase. Once the blades are all set up, we can set the shredder tooth assembly aside and move on to our next step. We lay down one of these half inch steel walls on the table and insert threaded rods into two corners. Just like the blade assembly, we install our blade spacers in an alternating pattern. Now we repeat this order for all the pieces until we use them all up. We've made some spare parts, but we won't be needing them for now. Once that's done, we can rotate the assembly and stand these steel spacers up. With this flat on the table, we can grab our blade assembly and place it on top to ensure proper alignment between all these parts. Everything seems to line up perfectly and the blades are spinning smoothly so we can move on to our next step and attach the shredder walls. To hold all of this together, we add nuts to the sides and tighten them which forces all the plates into place and helps them align the side walls. Now just in case these walls still want to angle inwards, we created a spacer with guide holes for our last two threaded rods. It's going to go right on top and also act as a final safety enclosure wall for Shreddy. It's a perfect fit and slides in with ease. Now we insert the metal rods and if they don't go in with force, well, you know the trick, use more force. We tighten these down with the final four nuts and insert the two supporting bearings for the shaft. Now let's secure them to the supporting walls with four screws each and voila, Shreddy is now complete. We gave the blades a manual spin to check that nothing is binding, and it worked beautifully. So let's move on to assembling the motor and gear. Now, you can use whatever combination of motor, gearing, and coupler that you want here, but we opted to use the famous NEMA 34 stepper motor because it was super easy to get from Amazon the next day. We also got a closed loop driver in the box for the stepper motor, which can detect if the motor begins to stall and puts out more current to help overcome the resistance. Now we know that stepper motors are not the best choice for this application, but in future iterations we want to program different slicing patterns into the motor and see if it helps cut harder materials. So time to set these up with the two cables that were in the box. A cable for the motor and a cable for the encoder. We begin with the motor cable which twisted on easily and then the encoder cable which just pressed together. Now the fun part, connecting these properly to the closed loop driver. After quickly reading the user manual, we knew exactly what to do. We plugged in the motor wires, securely tightened them, and repeated the process for the encoder wires. After both those connections were secure, we plugged them into the stepper drive and proceeded to set up the power supply. This is a standard 60 volt switching power supply that we got from Amazon. Now, 48 volts is the maximum voltage that is considered safe to use, so we could technically go up to 60 volts, but we'd rather be safe. It's definitely not the most powerful setup, and it will be controlled with an Arduino. Do we really need to do this? Well, not really, but who knows what weird function we might program into this thing. Just before we program that though, we'd like to show you this 50 to 1 ratio planetary gearbox. What this is going to do is reduce our speed by 50 times, but multiply our torque by 50 times. Since our shredder needs torque rather than speed, this will help our machine function more reliably. It goes on the motor just like that. The motor slides into the gearbox just like this and is mounted with four M6 screws. Also, this part's gonna connect right into Shreddy. In order to connect it, we got these shaft couplers that slide on nicely and are tightened by a bolt. Now we're going to connect our motor and gearbox unit to Shreddy. 
We removed the wall piece and screwed in 3 8 by 16 bolts that will hold standoffs that support the motor plate. We screwed in the 4 standoffs, ensured the motor plate is secured, and add the remaining supporting bolts. Notice how when we spin the blades, the shaft also spins. This is exactly what we want. So now Shreddy is ready to be connected to the motor system. Also, remember this guy? Well, it's made of aluminum, so we decided to make our own coupler out of hardened steel. We first insert this coupler onto the shaft and then insert the motor system. We tightened it securely with four screws and Shreddy was finally complete. We're super excited to give it a try. Before we can test it though, we needed to write some simple code into our Arduino which we're using to run the stepper motor. So let's get right into it. We programmed the Arduino using Arduino IDE, which is this free computer software that you see here. The code wasn't too complex, and I wanted to take a minute here to explain how it works line by line for those of you who may find this useful. First, we define some simple variables that we'll use throughout our code. This is standard in any Arduino code. Then, under the void setup, we define which of the pins that we are using on the Arduino board are input pins, and which ones are output pins. Lastly, under the void loop, we write our actual code. We're going to check the analog input coming in from pin 0, which is where the potentiometer connects, and if our value is greater than 900, which is an arbitrary number we chose, then run the stepper motor. We wrote raw code to run the motor instead of relying on a code library, which gives us more control. The more we turn the potentiometer, the faster the motor spins. As a bonus, you can check if your potentiometer is working properly by adding these three lines of code. Then just open your serial plotter and you'll see what input between 0 and 1023 you get from the potentiometer as you turn it one way or the other. The next step is to test Shreddy, and we're super excited. Alright, so for our first test we're going to be shredding this clear plastic bottle, and we're really hoping there won't be any issues. Wow, look at that! It shred that bottle beautifully. And listen to that crunch sound. That's exactly what we want to hear. If we take a closer look here, you can see that the bottle is being shredded into chunks. And under the machine, we have a pile of shredded bottle that we can now recycle with Injecto, our tiny plastic injection machine. Another really useful purpose for Shreddy is to help us grind up our unneeded 3D prints. Remember these parts that we printed and didn't use? Well, here they are again. This entire process is honestly so satisfying to watch. Shreddy has proven itself for turning these scrap parts into pellets for Injecto. Under Shreddy, we can see that everything was turned into small strips. So after testing it out, it's clear that we're onto something, but unfortunately the shreds are too big to be comfortably used in Injecto. So we got started on a new design that we're calling Shreddy 2, which has a thin blade design and improved configuration, which should allow us to shred faster and more effectively into smaller pieces. Again, we fabricated all our pieces and built Shreddy 2 the same way. It was quicker to align all these parts up on the table, and then insert the threaded rods. Again, if you can't do it with force, use more force. Lastly here, we count that we have the correct number of plates lined up as per our CAD design, and we're ready to proceed. Again, we've made some spare parts that we can set aside for our rainy day. Here we need to align our stack with the motor plate and secure it with a nut. Now we get to the main upgrades, the new blades. In comparison to the originals, you can see that they both have the same cutting diameter, but the teeth on the new blades are far smaller. The entire blade is also half the thickness at 3mm, so the blades should produce far smaller granules, which would be perfect for Injecto. So let's take the motor plate off and install all the blades onto the hexagonal drive shaft. This process is the same as before, so we're gonna speed it up for you. Alright, these blades look super capable. After we drop them into place, we can begin to close everything up, starting with the motor plate. Add the supporting wall, and finally, our 3D printed spacer plate. For the motor, we're using the same configuration as before, but really, any motor that could be coupled to the shaft is going to spin it, so something cheaper would be better. Alright, let's fire it up with our little potentiometer and throw some test parts in. Alrighty, so for our first Shreddy 2 test, we're going to be shredding this plastic water bottle. It seems to be shredding the cap really nicely, so let's throw in the entire bottle. Wow, this is working really well, we're super happy with this. The size of these shreds look perfect, so let's try some thicker plastics to really put it to the test. 
For a better visual, we're going to show you a side-by-side -side comparison of Shreddy 1 and 2 shredding 3D printed parts. You can clearly see that Shreddy 2 on the left here cuts the plastic into much smaller pieces. Our new blade design in Shreddy 2 is evidently working as intended, which makes us super happy. The machine also held up really well with these large 3D prints that we had lying around. And underneath, beautifully shred 3D printed parts, which as you can see are much more optimal for Injecto in comparison to our previous design. So let's take it over to Injecto 2.0 and inject into our 3D printed molds. We simply insert the shreds, clamp our 3D printed mold, and inject our part. And once we open it up, we get this really nice part made of recycled plastic that we can make over and over again at home. We nailed the science of using 3D printed molds using our Injecto 2.0 machine and we'll be making all these details available in our next video which we'll be releasing next month. Subscribe now so you don't miss out. So there you have it, Shreddy 2. Don't forget we're giving Shreddy away to one random subscriber so make sure to hit that subscribe button right away. The winner will be announced on our community page and in this video's description. If you like our content and want to support our channel, make sure to check out our new merch or become a channel member. All the links are down below. We'll see you next time.